Hi everybody, Yara here. I hope you're all well and for those who do not know me, I'm normally a trance channel and also a conscious channel and I do intuitive astrology or evolutionary astrology or you might say karmic astrology. And I know there is so much information out there about what is called the Great American Eclipse and obviously the path of totality um, goes from south to north, it crosses up to Salem in Connecticut. So. What else is actually happening during this eclipse? Loads of stuff. And I find this very, very interesting um, lit little tidbits that I sort of picked up on the way. And more, moreover, looking at the comet 12P Ponds Brooks or what other people call the Devil's Comet. So there are not very many other videos or, well, I wasn't looking at texts that I found about the spiritual meaning of a comet passing through actually the constellation of Aries or the tropical um, astrology sign of Taurus. Um, what is important is that the 12P Pons Brooks comet that appears to be blue-greenish in the sky is going to pass by on the 8th of April when the Great American Eclipse is happening next to a um, fixed star that is called Hamal. And this fixed star Hamal, it's uh, Arabic, has a very heavy energy. It's called in um, Arabic astrology one of the great malefics. And now I can see people sort of snapping into fear. It's more what the energy that can be compared to is what is happening currently in the sign of Pisces. It's heavy, it's uh, depressed, it can give you feelings of withdrawing in yourself, though at the same time the eclipse is in a fire sign. So, on different levels, so much is happening. And this fixed star, Hamal, has a similar energy to a, a, a very heavy energy. But then, the interesting thing is about this comet, and I've learned something here, is when it passes by, um, on the 8th of April, actually it's already the 7th of April, um, the tail or the part, we, yeah, the particle trail will be visible the most, well at least with binoculars or a camera um, or any of the sky apps. And what happens is obviously as um, it comes closer to the sun, it will release gases and within these gases are act is actually stardust, one might say, because it's like the vapors that are coming off this clump of ice and rock. And they will come into contact eventually of the Schumann resonance or the Earth's magnetic field and will be pulled actually down. So we'll be breathing in stardust. 
which I find very poetic and interesting. I know comets throughout history, ancient history, have always been connected to harbingers of um, terrible things to come. There was, for example, before um, the... Um, um, pestilence, um, Jesus, what's it called? <laughs> the second time round um, during the 17th century, particularly Europe and uh, the UK, was during Charles II. And the comet was seen right at the beginning of the Black Death. Sorry, that's what I was looking for. Um, it was pubonic plague. Jesus, can I say it? Um, and then there was the Great Fire of London, 1666. Sorry, I'm a bit more clued up on the uh, UK side. So, it's deeply ingrained in our belief systems to see comets as harbingers of uh, famine, war, um, destruction. But I wanted to look at it in a different way and thinking, yes, it's quite telling in a way that a comet is at, um, at its peak visibility of the particle or vapor trail with particles during this um, solar eclipse that is very potent because it's connected to many levels of experience. And I think it touches upon and chimes in to the lunar eclipse that happened on the 25th of March. And because it's Aries, which is um, basically uh, unbundled uh, energy and will, like going through walls with your head, it's a fire sign, it's a cardinal fire sign. So there is a lot of fire, but there are many fire, let's say, um, you feel the heat, for example, in relationships. And anything that is flimsy, for example, relationships to me are like bridges, or it's a bond, a bridge between two people or more people. And this eclipse, because it's on the relationship axis of Aries and Libra, Libra trying to balance, let's say, the yin and the yang from a very aloof point, um, point of view, but nonetheless wants to be diplomatic and is associated with Venus, the higher octane of Venus, because Venus also rules Taurus. So, this eclipse feels actually very explosive, but also very healing. Um, it's a total eclipse, and there's a huge, huge difference between a partial and a total, because something gets eclipsed. The sun gets eclipsed, hence it's going to be for a few minutes dark, which is very interesting. I've spoken about this, I think, before. It's sun, because the sun um, was connected to royalty or heads of state. So something will, a door will totally close, meaning that something in on an individual level, or also on the collective level, maybe, a door we close, some, something will be finished. And there's no going back to make room for the new to come. Because it's that void that needs to be filled. Because if you're closing out, something totally and there will be no going back because that's the uh, energy of an eclipse 
you can only go forward. For the moment, I feel or I see there is a lot of hesitation. You want to do, you want to almost jump the gun and you are consistently like, it's a, yeah, it's like having, you know, one foot on the accelerator and the other one on the brake and you have the handbrake and you're revving and revving and I'd say even if, even on the geopolitical side, um, because I see a lot of militants, I see maybe um, there could be, I mean, it's just a feeling I have, a, a turning point in one of the conflicts or an ending of something. Although my analytical mind says this is highly unlikely because it's such an explosive energy. And... I'm trying to na navigate these waters too because on top of that there is a Mercury retrograde that is closing in because it's in retrograde motion. It's retracing um, its steps because Mercury, the messenger of the God, it's how we express ourselves what we write so we're making an inward journey with retracing our steps from when mercury was forward and that in fire sign is pretty difficult because we want to get moving but the retrograde motion is holding us back with the weight and the strange feeling of being sort of drowned or, or held back in, in, in the Pisces energy of your beliefs, of your faith. Faith will be tested and I see also maybe religious wars or religious conflict maybe being brought to the table because what an eclipse does as well, things that were occulted or hidden because the eclipse is in Aries, in a fire sign, will be brought to the table because it's total. It has to, things have to be eclip eclipsed, but before you eclipse them, you have to deal with them. And I feel many people are dealing maybe what I'm seeing with breakups because we have the relationship axis between Aries, the me energy, but not the ego. It's me wanting to do. It's action orientated. And Libra, that is orientated towards the other. So I think there will be many tensions um, with maybe uh, relationships ending and that doesn't need to be man and wife or um, same-sex relationships. It could be also with a friend. Um, and I think anything, any bridge that you built to somebody that is flimsy or not um, well entertained or kept or, or kept alive, all of that will go. There are so many levels that are touched by this. And with the comet, um, I feel there's an additional energy given. So, but to close that w video off, at the same time, NASA will fire three rockets um, during the eclipse into space and the CERN Hedron Collider will get moving again at the same time. Jupiter is visible in the sky as well as 12P Ponsbrook's comet or the Devil's Comet. And I think people interpret this Devil's Comet really badly. It's because in his trail it looks like horns but to me it looks like something else he has a beautiful color and to close off i might go into that later some people have likened the ponds brooks comet that's 
by the way, returns every 71 uh, years. So if you go back 71 years uh, from now, we can talk about Cold War, um, talk about the Cuban Missile Crisis, for example. That's very interesting. I have to, to research more and see when, uh, you know, 142 years ago, what happened. Um, I haven't got, you know, my history sort of ready and handy. Um, so they have likened it because it's a blue, it has a bluish greenish trail, but it's more like bluish to the Hopi prophecy of the coming of the blue star Kachina and I find this correlation quite interesting um, because it can mean an absolutely new beginning and if you go into this uh, prophecy uh, it's way too complex to go into now it's talking about um, keeping the faith and the Hopi faith going, then once the blue kachina passes, you're going to go into a different um, world, meaning or uh, well, having basically a paradigm shift, a massive one, or it could mean total destruction. Well, I think we're going to opt for this one. I mean, we know that the earth has been rolled up and out you know in parallel uh, uh, realities multiple times um so i don't think it's the end of the world or the comet is a harbinger of of the the apocalypse or the end times as many are saying i think it's just a lot of energy that um we are witnessing because we are projecting collectively what we need to see in fact so basically i suggest and i suggest this to myself to be able if you can and i'm telling that to myself as well to step back and be a spectator if some bridges collapse, well, <laughs> incidentally, a boat drove into uh, the Baltimore Bridge, that there was a, a literal bridge collapse. Um, so anything that is flimsy or you have not well maintained, and here I talk about relationship level or on a business level, this will all be well shown and brought to the table to be shown and so we are shown how to build more constructively and from another vantage point because in May and then June we're going to have much lighter energies faster energies um, a lot of communication maybe too much communication but first we just gotta sail through the eclipse but don't forget it's not just the one day it has normally like a six month span but since it's two two hours and a bit I can't remember now but some people have said that the influences of this particular eclipse can go up to two years but the rule of thumb is actually six months so don't put yourself on the ejection seat because we have tendency to do that now and don't let yourself to be sucked in by all the information and also deep fakes that are going on it's very difficult also with this piscean oceanic delusionary illusionary realm of ai it's difficult to ascertain now what is real and what is not real so go by your intuition and don't act rashly 
because it could hurt the situation more. The only thing you can do is ride it out, take a, a back seat or a step back, rather watch than let yourself be drawn in. Of course, if you have to live a particular uh, event um, or, or, or events during this particular energetic signature or cycle, um, then it will also mean a new start is coming. When something totally is eclipsed out and finished, it leaves room for the new. Sorry that it's so long. Love you and speak to you soon.